and you know and it's like that is something that we want to know but the ins and outs of it you're right we're so afraid to the shame that might come with you know whether or not we could have given birth naturally or we had to have a c-section or if we had you know complications Mm -hmm. or what have you and like with my third it was my and my and last because you know that was enough okay she was a typical (laughs) third baby you know I went into labor full-on labor then it just stopped and I was like how does labor even stop and I was told Mm -hmm. this is typical third baby stuff and I thought because I'd had you know my second basically nearly flew out um I thought third time would be the same we're gonna be piece of cake oh my gosh it was the it was the most horrific (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> you know, mm. experience. And it's like, I want you to share with us what are some of the, you know, not the stories, but what has this kind of opened your eyes to when it comes to what women have to go through to bring life on, on earth? And, you know, why has this been such a something that you're really passionate about? Mm, let's see. So to clarify, my book is about holistic childbirth around the world. So picking back off of my expertise as being a holistic healer. So again, it's the whole story. It's not just the moment that the woman has the baby, that the baby comes into the world. I wanted to explore the whole journey. So it's from the moment she finds out that she's pregnant. It's through the whole pregnancy. How does she feel emotionally and physically? What happens during the childbirth experience? And then the postpartum period as well. So it's Mm. a whole experience. And I interviewed over 60 women. So I did a lot of uh, research, a lot of interviewing. Uh, What has this really taught me about childbirth that I never knew before? Or just about women. Well, it's taught me a lot about women. (laughs) It's taught me how, you know, powerful and amazing women are. And how women transform from the experience of giving birth, from becoming a mother. And that's what I think a lot of women do not realize is how much they are going to change. It's not just their life is going to change because they have a child and maybe not have as much free time, but really they transform. It's really about their transformation too. So for me, that was very interesting. Also, the shame was very surprising. I didn't know how much women carry shame. And again, it's, it's not just what you would expect it to be about. It's about everything. You know, a lot of women, you know, were feeling shame that they had so many miscarriages before, and they have a lot of self-judgment about that. Even women have uh, shame about having a very easy conception or a very easy birth. And you would think that they wouldn't because, wow, that's something to celebrate. You had a very easy experience. Wouldn't that be something you're like, okay, women, it's, it can be easy. It doesn't have to be painful. But again, because there is this division between women on this topic that they are afraid that if they talk about how easy they were able to conceive or how easy they were able to give birth, that it was very quick, that they would feel this would cause this argument, this, this unpleasant discussion with other women. So instead, they keep it silent. They keep it hidden. But again, they're not expressing their full self, their full experience. It just seems to be the norm, the idea, the universal concept that childbirth has to be very, very painful. It has to be very long, has to be a disempowering experience. And that is what is so surprising to me is that most women just either expect for a perfect birth or they expect, oh, well, it's, it's probably not going to work out well if the first one had uh, a lot of complications. So they kind of dread it. And it's unfortunate that something as beautiful as bringing a baby into the world that so many people would be so fearful of, and so many people would be so scared and dreading. So yeah, I just learned so much. I mean, I could just talk on and on and on and on and on (laughs) about this all day. But what I really want to help is to unify women. I don't want there to be this divide that women feel they cannot talk openly about their experiences. And I want women to feel empowered during the birth experience. And I think there's a lot of reasons why women don't feel empowered. And one of the reasons is that there is a lot of obstetric violence. And a lot of women are not really aware of what happens at hospitals and how they are not even given the power to decide to make different decisions. Different decisions are made for them. And so again, it's like they have no rights over their own body. So that is um, very very traumatic for a lot of women. A lot of women go through post-traumatic stress disorder from having a baby. You know, you would think that that only happens during war or terrible trauma, but the experience of having a baby in a hospital for many women is traumatic. 
And so I really believe that we need to create this awareness so that women are aware of what can possibly happen. And if they're against it, you know, speak up and really make sure they are going with the right doctor or the right midwife so that they can have the experiences that they want so that they are clear, the other person is clear what their wishes are, um, get blindsided at the end. For me, it's like, wow, this so many things that you talked about, I don't even know where to start, that you brought up that I was like, wow, yeah, you're right. This stuff doesn't get talked about or we kind of sweep it under the rug or, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I, I mean, I just think back to, you know, because I can only talk for myself, you know, having had three kids, it's like the aftermath. And I remember even like when I was pregnant and it's like so many people around me would want to have a baby, but then I would be like, this whole pregnancy thing is just awful. Like I would just, and then I would feel so guilty for being pregnant and not enjoying it or you know, my mm. body was just like, you know, I, if, with my son, I was, I was quite cool. But when I've been pregnant with girls, I've got two girls. It's like, man, my body does not cope being pregnant with girls. And I would just feel like everyone's like, it's okay. Pregnancy so beautiful. And I'm like, pregnancy is not beautiful. Like I am so sore everywhere and I am so like tired and, you know, like, and then mm. it would be like, you know, think of the women who can't have children. You have, you know, you have such a gift right now happening inside of you. And it's like, yeah, but then that also putting that onto women is not something that's positive either, because now you're creating the guilt and the shame and we Mm -hmm. don't talk about it. We don't actually talk about what, how we're truly feeling or Mm -hmm. the postpartum. It's like, now you've got this baby, you know, so many babies don't take a breath. You know, you've got a healthy baby you need to be really happy with that. But you know what? It's like sometimes you don't necessarily feel connected to your baby or you don't necessarily feel like you're yourself anymore or all these feelings. I'm like, oh my gosh, Mm -hmm. I just think back to, you know, what it was like. And I think probably I had postnatal depression, but I was so in denial. I was like, I don't have postnatal Mm. depression, you know, like none of that. And um, a lot of women don't realize it. It's very true. And that's something that I want to bring awareness to is that a lot of women go through postpartum depression, some go through postpartum psychosis, and a lot of them don't know until after they've gotten through the period that they went through it. Yeah. So So, yeah, your work is so needed. And I mean, oh my gosh, like I said, you do so many things. You're such an interesting (laughs) person. You're such a powerhouse. And uh, oh my gosh, I love it. It's like, you've got a really big heart and, you know, you've probably had, you know, many past lives to master all of these skills that you're bringing into the world. But when we were talking for, you told me that if you could have a conversation with anyone in the world in history, that it would be, sir, I don't know if he was a sir, but let's call him a sir because he deserves it. Sir Albert Einstein. And I just want to share a quick story before you tell us what you'd want to ask him. I remember uh, in the very beginning of my career, so this might have been 2013, one of my teachers said to me, you know, do a meditation and see who comes to you. And I was like, okay. I was like, oh, it's going to be someone really interesting, like Michael Jackson or something. And (laughs) yeah, I was like, yeah. So I did this meditation and Albert Einstein came and I was like, oh, why does he have to come? I'm so not a sciencey person. I was like, blah. And oh my gosh, I never realized until that moment how spiritual. I've got goosebumps just thinking mm. about my meditation with him. It was probably the most profound meditation I've ever had. I'm like getting all like teary thinking about it because I had never done anything like that before. And then I felt so privileged that he'd come to me in this way and revealed who he truly was as a person and maybe not like the sciencey version of himself. So that's my little tidbit with Albert Einstein. Wonderful. I think he's just amazing. So why, why him and what would you ask him? So Albert Einstein was a genius. He was a talented scientist. And as you mentioned, he was very spiritual. 
And most people don't realize this, but I've always been fascinated by him, fascinated by him for a long time. I've got several books. I've always, you know, followed his quotes and let everybody know that I'm a huge Albert Einstein fan. And 